Hello everyone and welcome back to more The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask And in this episode what we're going to be doing that is uh, going on rolling at the thing apparently No, we're going to be going on top of this and getting access to a new area or so Because now that I'm waiting for my sword to get uh, reforged There's a couple of things that I can actually do Particularly with this guy over here So how about we have a word of him I'm the Goron who sells the powder keg, the most famous product of the Gorons Want a powder keg? Powder kegs uh, explode with powerful blasts and are very dangerous. Until I have tested you to see if you can use them properly, I can't let you use any on your own. Will you give it a try? <laughs> yeah, that's why not. If you can destroy the boulder that blocks the entrance of the Goron racetrack near here, using the powder keg I'm about to give you, then I'll approve you to carry them. Thank you! Oh wait, literally he just throws one down for me, does he? Fair enough, thank you. Right, when the powder cake begins to take it faster, it means it's about to explode. Try not to blow up the boulder, uh, try to blow up the boulder, blocking the Goron racetrack entrance without the powder cake exploding on the way. The design near the racetrack, so keep an eye out for it. When you finish, come see me. The reason why I'm speaking fast now is because this spin has already started ticking and stuff, and I honestly think I've wasted a lot of my time just literally reading the text, because you want to be trying... You want to be quick with this spin, okay? And what you mainly want to do is, when he gets it for you, like he was saying, you want to try and guide it to the Goron racetrack. And how I'd recommend that you do that also is... Well, just follow what I do, really. Is just uh, carry it with you and stuff. But when you have to go up slopes, just throw it. And then uh, make sure that then you just roll up and then pick it up that way. It's kind of similar, I suppose, to... You know what? Actually, yeah. It kind of reminds me a lot. Okay, if you guys have ever played this game called Spider-Man, uh, which was uh, for the PS1, N64, Dreamcast, and PC, or it's more known as Spider-Man 2000, uh, the very first thing you did, which was... Uh, I forgot what it was called, I think it was called a hostage situation, I believe. And it was like this bomb that you had to put in the safe to stop it from blowing up. It reminds me a lot of that, you know? Basically, when Spider-Man goes, the robbers have been taken care of, but what can I do about the bomb? Think, Spidey, think! I don't know, it just reminds me a lot of that, for some reason. It's a shame, though, how that baseline is not really kicking in or so, because... Honestly, Spider-Man has a lot of that, you know, for, like, the PS1 and stuff, really. A lot of the songs are just simple loops, but they're really, really good for the time, and they just... I don't know, they just suit Spider-Man so well for what they were doing. Like, I've always associated Spider-Man, and at least just thought things suited him more, you know? Uh, when there's, like, some sort of techno beat going on, but with, like, some sort of rock guitar going on, I suppose? I guess you'll get a better idea if you literally listen to the OST of Spider-Man. Because honestly, it's really good, and the reason why it's probably good is because uh, it's composed by Tommy Tallarico, and Tommy Tallarico is a really freaking awesome uh, video game composer, as he's made like the music to Earthworm Jim and all kinds of stuff. Really. Look him up, seriously. Tommy Tallarico is a freaking mastermind when it comes to music. Oh, dummy! Now that it's nice and warm out, I'm much, much better. Even my daddy isn't right beside me. I won't be selfish and cry. Even if, sorry. So now that spring has come, the Goron races should be starting soon. But... But this rock is in the way, so I can't get in to see the race. And spring's just started too. I was so excited, but there's nothing I can do. I hate it! I want to see it! I want to see it! I want to see the race! Alright, cool. Fair enough. Keep your hair on. <laughs> I suppose. Anyway, right. Um, because after a while, uh, this spin will blow up. However, because I am extremely impatient, I am literally going to hit it with an arrow just so it blows up. Because you're supposed to wait for it to... What? Oh my god, really? Wow, just that little bit of a frame is enough. Like, what? Really? Okay, then no, let's try it. There we go, fine. <laughs> the block was actually blocking it then. That was weird. Um, or at least the rock, anyway. You did it! Thanks a lot. I'm going right in. I'll be waiting for you, so you have to come to see it. Now, I don't really get how I was, you know, darn money to begin with. And I took off my mask right in front of him also. And for some reason, it wasn't enough for him to realise that, oh wait, you're Domani? You know, I don't really get that or so. I literally took my mask in f off in front of him and he's like, oh, like you're a completely different person. No, I'm just literally the same person that you just saw a minute ago. I just literally took my mask off in front of you, sir. How do you not know that? What? Goodness me, look at the pose that he's at. Jesus, he was almost like doing a Michael Jackson or something right then. <laughs> I've only just noticed that. Okay, right, so let's just have a word. The Goron race is the honor the coming of, of spring are about to begin. It's a really, really cool race, so you should watch it. Once you see these Goron races, you'll wish you were born a Goron. Yeah, because we're Link and stuff, and not actually the Goron itself. Um, you know, it'll cause a different string of dialogue, because we're supposed to be the Goron to actually enter the race, obviously. Otherwise, we're not really going to win, are we? If I speak to it as a Deku, though, 
it. I mean, the baby. Once you see these Goron races, you'll wish you were Goron Goron. He's gonna say the same thing. Okay, cool. But now I'm gonna speak to it as Darmani and do a mini game that a lot of people hate. Everybody hates this. Ah, oh, Darmy, I've been waiting for you. See, everyone's restless because uh, they can't wait to enter. You're gonna enter, aren't you? You're gonna, you're gonna enter, aren't you? Uh, yes, absolutely. You have to. I want to show everyone how Darmy races. If your magic power runs low, charge it up with the green jars on the course. Okay, and this is one reason why I decided, you know, to get the upgrade. It was not only for the uh, the boss that we fought in Snowhead Temple, it was also for this minigame right here, or at least a side quest, you know, going on. Because uh, the more magic meter you have, the better you will be. And one thing I recommend you to do is go all the way back, and then literally start from here, because by that time, you hopefully will already have bursted into a ball of spikes, and you mainly want to try and get to the end. The problem with this is that the AI, to me, is pretty much similar if you've ever played Mario Kart 64 for the N64. Because uh, I often find that the AI on that is all over the place, particularly when you get to 150cc, where it's really, really freaking annoying, you know, half the time. Because sometimes you'll be miles ahead, and then just magically, everybody will just catch up to you. What? What the hell happened to that guy down there? That's really weird. That's never happened to me before. Usually they just carry on going and stuff, but, um... Yeah, so mainly what you want to keep doing in that is just try to keep rolling around and occasionally you will have to clang, uh, you know, into other Gorons and stuff to try and get through a lot easier. But that's what I mean, see, notice how I'm just continuously rolling, I'm just continuously going forward and sometimes, like the Gorons and that, they'll just magically catch up to me and stuff. It's really random, I will say that, but honestly, me personally, I don't tend to have too much trouble with this mission. I know a lot of people... Or at least, you know, just objective, if you will. Now, I know a lot of people in that who really, really hate this, because often from time to time they'll find that, you know, trying to get through this is really annoying, and they'll be here for hours trying to win one single race. But for some reason, I don't know, I'm special or something, because I just get through it in the first try. Oh god! <laughs> I got hit by one! That's not nice! At least I didn't lose any hearts, though. That was great! I knew you were the fastest Goron Dami. I was sure you'd get first place. This is from Daddy, it's the prize. Now, this is a lot harder, by the way, if you don't have the uh, extended uh, magic bars going on, but I don't know why, just for me, personally, I don't really tend to have much trouble with that. I just keep on rolling, and when I get hit, I don't really lose my crap or anything. I'm just like, I got hit, okay, I'm just gonna build up more speed and then just try again. I've even had one, you know, where I've got hit down like five times, and I still somehow came first. Just, I don't know. I never really had the problem with that, it's weird. Anyway. You got a bottle of gold dust. This is the finest quality available. I want to be just like you. Quick! Oh well, that's the Julie has to say. Uh, actually, does anybody else say anything? I'm just kind of curious. No, they're literally just warming up and stuff. Oh, actually, no, wait, I can! Hello. This year, I'm feeling a little different. I'm not surprised, because I just want it. What about you? The money! Are you ready? I'm raring to go. Wait, what? I've already won it, sir. There's no point. I'm not even going to bother talking to them then. <laughs> I should have really done this at the beginning, but never mind. But yeah, that's the Gorm race. A lot of people have trouble with it. I don't know. I just, I don't really have trouble with that. I often have more trouble at the town shooting gallery <laughs> compared to the Gorm race for some reason. It's weird. I don't know. Some things are different for some people, I guess. I don't know, man. Anyway, but the gold dust will be useful for something because, um, now this, wait a minute, hold on. One thing I would like to do very first and to save me a bit of hassle is, um, I successfully, you know, took the powder keg to that boulder and got rid of it, and also won at the Goron races. As long as you literally get rid of the boulder, you know, with the powder keg, uh, what you mainly want to do, just to save you a bit of grief, by the way, and see if you're having to backtrack all the way and stuff, is go back to, uh, the Goron, you know, that I literally got the powder keg from, and talk to him again, because then he will approve of us doing it. And then, if you remember or so, there was this particular Goron at a certain shopping clock town, uh, that basically sold one of these uh, powder kegs. And as long as I go back to this guy and then get given at least one by him, I will then be approved. Meaning then I don't literally have to go and, you know, defeat Goat all over again. And, you know, clear Snowhead Temple, traverse all the way back here in order to get one powder keg. Because then I can just get it immediately straight from the get-go at a uh, clock town. It looks like you managed to succeed. Knowing your skills, I feel fine letting you handle uh, pow powder kegs on your own. It was bad of me to put you through such dangerous test. I want you to take this as my apology. And there we go! There's the very first powder keg that we've got where we can literally equip this in our inventory. 
Uh, be careful, its sheer power and size are immense. Powder cakes are very volatile, so you can carry only one at a time. If you shoot the woman with an arrow, the- Oh, right. Yeah, I already know about this. I did that earlier, actually, just to make things a bit more convenient. What? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I wasn't really trying to speak to him. I was trying to, like, roll out of the place, but never mind. Um, and one thing I suppose I might as well do in that is... Because I'm a lazy Irish, so what I'm going to do is literally just Song of Soaring my way back to Mountain Village. No, not take off the mask. This hasn't happened for a while now. Yeah, I'm going to Song of Soaring or so back to um, the Mountain Village. Because now I want to go back and jet see how my uh, sword has come along. Because I believe they said it will be available the next day. But I'm kind of curious to see what happens, you know, if you just go up to it normally. To be honest, there's not really much else to say, you know, during these transitions with the Song of Soarings going on. So from time to time, I might have to be quiet and stuff, but still... Um, oh actually no, I'll tell you one thing I can do, because this isn't really ice water anymore, it means I can now safely go through here, because if you look at the map, if I press L by the way, it gets rid of it, and if I press it again it comes back, that's quite ideal. There'll be like this orange dot, meaning that there's a little, uh, secret chest here. If I pull out the lens of truth, it'll then reveal it, and of course in here we have, what do we have again, we have 20 rupees, yeah that's a bit more convenient also. I'm often quite over the moon though when I find a place, you know, that has like 100 rupees or stuff, or even when I discover that bird that gives you 200 rupees every time you kill it, because that thing is just the most convenient thing of all time. Anyway, what I want to do is go inside here and see how they're getting on, because they'll probably say, Hey, we're not done yet, go away, or something. In fact, wow, they're actually still continuously doing it. Huh? Look, I'm working on strengthening your sword, I'm busy, so don't bother me. That is tiny. Wow, what? I actually never noticed this. Cool. Uh, what? Did they see something different? I speak to them again? Girl, you're persistent. I can't focus on my work. Just wait until morning. Why does it show that all the time? That's weird. Okay, let's do it once more. Girl, you're persistent. I have it up. He's going to say the exact same thing, isn't he? Right, cool. So then I'm literally just going to go out, move on to the next morning and do something. Because um, one thing you'll find is you're probably like, cool, you won gold dust, but what's that for exactly? Well, you'll find out. Let me just uh, move ahead though to the next morning. <laughs> Alright, cool. So now I've moved on to the next morning stuff, hopefully my thing should be finished by now. Because now you're about to find out why the heck we needed gold dust in the first place. You see, he's upgraded our sword at the minute, but something else will happen, okay? I kept you waiting, but it's done, see? So now we are currently rewarded with this, which is a razor sword, and it says this new sharper blade is a cut above the rest. Use it up to 100 times without dulling its superior edge. Now, keep in mind that after you've used this 100 times, the blade will lose its edge and return to its original sharpness. Now, here's a secret. If you bring me gold dust before this sword loses its edge, I'll be able to make it the strongest sword around. You got that? Gold dust. And what he said right there. Cool. However, um, I do actually have gold dust with me, and I could use it right away, but I kind of want to show you how I found this out in the first place, you know, when I was just playing this normally in my spare time. Uh, yes, no crap, there's a customer! Gabora, fetch our customer some uh, coffee quick-like. Now then, let me take a look at your sword. Hmm. Hey, now that's a mean joke. Your sword has already been reforged into a razor sword. Unless... do you want me to make your sword stronger? To do that, you'll, I'll need gold dust. Do you have any? I do, but I don't really want to say so at the minute. I want to see what you have to say. Huh? That's not gold dust. <laughs> you can't get your hands on it that easily, you know. What? What? You say that gold dust is the prize for winning the Patriots race that's held by the Gorons every spring? There you go! That's how I found it out or so, you know? What have you tried entering that? And, yeah. That's how I basically knew about the gold dust in the first place, you know, so basically I went to them and I said, Oh, I don't really have it, and they said, Why don't you try the Goron's race? And I was like, the Goron's race? Okay, cool. So I just went over to the Goron's place and I was like, Hey, do you know about the Goron's race? Yeah, we do! There's like a powder cake in the way though, you need to basically blow up the powder, or so with like the powder cake going on. I'd be like, Okay, cool, let me just go get the powder cake, and oh look, there's the baby! <laughs> Stuff, and you know. Yeah, that's basically like a, a bloody abridged version of how I found all this out. <laughs> Somebody make an animation of that, that would be amazing. Alright, anyway, yeah. For reals this time, I would like to give them gold dust, because this will upgrade my sco scored and make it a hell of a lot more easier. Okay, uh, yeah, it does, which just so happens to be the first prize at the Grand Race Drag. If I can just get some gold dust, and this is just between us, I can make you the strongest of swords. The strongest. 
Yeah, I know. What? I already have, sir. What? Um, hello, sir? Maybe? Um, I, w I, I have the gold dust. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> Is it because I literally said no? Oh, my God. Hang on. Did I really screw this up? No way. Hang on. I, I just want to go back out and then go back in. Hopefully, he will take it. I hope that it's just because I said no and that he's not going to actually do it, because that'll be annoying. No, he doesn't. That's a relief. Oh my god, good. If you ever have that, then walk back out and go back in. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, let me take a look at this sword. You can say the same thing as before. Um, yes, I do have gold dust. And here you are, my good sir. Man thing. Why, if it isn't gold dust, and it's even top quality? Why, even if I use it to afford your sword, there'll still be some left. Alright, just for you. I'll do this for free, but don't tell anyone. Thanks for dropping in. Now then, I'm straight off to work. Come back tomorrow morning. Alright, yeah. So cool, while well, that's going on, um... Oh, wait, I don't have my sword. <laughs> I can't really do a lot then, can I? Um, let me have a think there for a second. Okay, ideally, I can't really do a lot without my sword, to be honest. There's not really a lot I can do, I'm afraid. So I'm just gonna skip ahead a couple of days until this thing's done, really, because all I need to literally do is skip ahead to the next morning. Oh, and by the way, he will only offer you the gold dust if you literally buy, uh, you know, to have your sword reforged or so, which will cost you 100 rupees. So even though he says, oh, I'll do it for free, you're kind of not doing it for free anyway, because you actually need to get, you know, the Razor Sword in the first place by paying him 100 rupees. So uh, just keep notes about it. that's the only way he will accept you to uh, give him the gold dust. So if you don't really want to have to buy, you know, the red sword to begin with, you kind of have to. So that's a real shame, really. And one thing I would recommend, really, is to make this a lot easier for yourself. Because they'd be a bit of grief, okay? The reason why I decided to do Snowhead Temple on the Dawn the first day, you see, is because um, then I could take in my sword and get it upgraded. So that by the time I got it back, it was Dawn of the second day, okay? Um, so then on dawn of the second day, I could give him the gold dust. If you give him the gold dust on today, which is dawn of the final day, he will say, sorry, I can't do that, because it's like the eve of the carnival, you know, tomorrow, or this evening and stuff. So that's very much your best way to do it. So on dawn of the first day, you want to go up to him and, you know, basically make sure it's spring or even just melt uh, the bit of ice yourself with your fire arrows and tell him, can I have my sword reforged? Um, and, you know, basically on dawn of the second day, that is when you get it back. And then you immediately after that want to give him the gold dust. So that then when it's dawn of the final day, you will hopefully have your sword completely upgraded. And you don't have to worry about it ever again. Because now, something nice and special is about to happen. I kept you waiting, but it's done, see? And now we get your razor sword has been strengthened. Now it's a gilded sword. Newly forged, your sword is better than ever and will never, ever, ever break. There it is. We, can, we can't make a sword stronger than that. No matter how many times you use it, um, it will never lose its edge. Try it. Oh, I used up most of the gold dust. Just a tiny little bit was left, so I got rid of it for you. And yeah, that's it now. We pretty much have the most powerful sword in the game so far, really. And this will be ideal for trying to defeat enemies as well as things later. And uh, we're at 20 minutes so far, but you know what, I might as well uh, demonstrate its use. So how about, you know, just as like a little tester or so, I'm literally going to go onwards to uh, Woodfall Temple and have a bit of a test with it on the Dolwa. Oh yeah, this will happen by the way when you return to here. Ye who hold my remains. Return to the appointed place to face me. So yeah, you guys thought that maybe when I said, oh yeah, I have to fight Adola again, that basically means that, oh, I'm going to have to go through the temple all over again because time is reset and stuff. Nope, they have a really clever design right here where it, they just allow you to immediately go back to the bosses just by stepping into this light. So it means all the stray fairies and keys and that I no longer have to do. If I ever want to fight Adola ever again in my life, all I literally have to do is step in this gleaming light. Go to the lair of the temple's boss? Yes, absolutely. Because I just mainly want to test out, you know, how the, uh, the Gilded Sword works. And I will agree, if Majora's Mask didn't have this, if it was literally to, in order to fight the bosses, you had to clear the temples again, then yes, I would have a lot to say about it, to be honest. But anyway, let's do a bit of a demonstration now on Adalwa, shall we? Because this thing 
makes every boss that we fought so far look like a joke. I mean, to be honest, at the first, very beginning or so, I took down the Dolra pretty quick, so it was a joke in the first place. Particularly in my practice file, when he literally did no attacks at all. I was like, what the hell just happened, man? That was weird. Anyways, right, so I want to time this, and now. Okay, right, cool, ready? So now, with the Gilded Sword, we are able to just repeatedly swing, and he's dead! Just like that, there you go. <laughs> that is how much more powerful you know our Gilded Sword is. Adolwa didn't even get a chance to do any other attacks. He literally had one strike from his sword, and within two full spins of him getting hit, he was down and out. And that, everybody, is the Gilded Sword. Also, yeah, that really weird thing happens right there with the glitch going on. I don't know why that happens or so. Every time I step onto that flower, I'm like, uh... Is it teleporting me? So then the slightest move, like, you know, the, the slightest bit forward with the analog stick. And um, then that's it. Then I teleport. It's rather weird. And by the way, every time you clear the places, you sadly have to, like, sit through the cutscenes again. And, well, I suppose they're not too long, so it doesn't really bother me that much. However, one thing that's slightly annoying, or at least it was annoying at first, but it's not as annoying now from what I've noticed, is if you remember before in that, uh, when we landed down, it basically triggered this cutscene with Na'vi... What, Na'vi? No, this is not going to time. Uh, Tattle and that talking to us, and basically informing us, you know, Oh, there's a thing behind us of grass. Let's hit that, and it reveals the Deku Princess. Um, you don't have to, because literally it just brings us right down here, and we can just run immediately straight out. If you hit that bit of grass, or just hedges, or something behind you, it will then trigger that long cut scene of having to put the Deku Princess in the bottle, you know, of her talking all the time. And, uh, you know, that's just a bit more convenient or so, just to let you guys know. Okay, so... Um, what else do I have to do at a time like this? I suppose... Um... Honestly, it's like dawn of the final day, so I mean, I'm gonna have to reset time and stuff anyway, to be honest, because the next era that we're going to, something needs to literally happen on dawn of the first day. So, uh, I'm literally going to song a song back to clock down, because I don't know, it's just fitting to end it in that type of area. And, um, I reckon I'm honestly gonna call this episode off right here for The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, because I need to practice a bit more on my practice bar now, because I've caught up to it. Already, bloody hell. In the next episode of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, we will be using powder kegs. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say, really, and probably going on to a next area after that. So take care, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And as per usual, I'll see you in the next one. Why did I chop the dog? <laughs>